Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. This is an exciting day. We're doing our very first live detox Q&A here on Facebook, but also recorded on Zoom. So it's a very exciting day, and I have a friend with me today. Her name is Ashley Hendrickson, and so she's on the call with me today. And we're going to be, hopefully, we're going to go through a lot of fun things, and then you'll have the opportunity to ask us any questions as we go along. So, Ashley, if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. Um, real quick, I'm Dr. Nadia, for those of you that don't know me, from Maple Brook Chiropractic. I'm a chiropractor, and I have my own office in Naperville. And I've been in love with these uh, detox, 14-day uh, detoxes that I have my patients do. And so I want to share with you guys today more about that, and it's going to be exciting. You know, the quarantine's been a rough time for a lot of us, so it's a great way for you to kind of get yourself back on track. So uh, I'm going to introduce Ashley and have her talk a little bit about how she kind of got involved with a wonderful company that I work with, and also just what led her into uh, doing functional medicine. So Ashley, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, thanks for being here today, and thank you, Dr. Nadia, for having me. Uh, my name is Ashley Hendrickson. I am a health educator for Designs for Health, which is the company that uh, supplies Dr. Nadia with the detox programs she's talking about. I've been with them for just over a year. Uh, prior to that, I worked for a functional medicine MD as his functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, and I'm also a national board certified functional medicine health coach. I've been in the functional medicine space for about seven years now. Um, my own health struggles and uh, frustrations with traditional Western medicine are what led me into the functional medicine space. Um, so many doctor visits where I thought things were not right and I kept being told to eat better, drink water, exercise more. And um, my background at the time was I was coaching CrossFit, eating paleo and drinking enough water a day uh, to stay healthy and hydrated. But the labs kept coming back that everything was normal. And it was not until I found a chiropractor actually who was very progressive in running functional blood work at the time um, to diagnose my Hashimoto's, which is kind of what started my path into learning more about what my body was doing and how what I was eating and my toxicity levels were impacting my health and um, keeping me from being as healthy as I wanted to be and also struggling to maintain a healthy weight. So I'm extremely passionate about what I do. Designs for Health has kind of allowed me to blend all of the things that I've been passionate about for a very long time into one nice little package to help support practitioners like Dr. Nadia um, as she's helping you all reach your health goals and um, hopefully feel much, much better. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think I hear that a lot in my practice where someone comes in and they just don't really feel that great, but all their blood work is come, kind of coming back normal. And so they just don't know where to go. And sometimes, you know, to be honest, I don't know where to go either. But I do know that um, kind of setting a clean slate as far as eating a little bit healthier and trying to normalize some things oftentimes will set us in the right direction. Um, so that's kind of whole, the whole philosophy behind doing a detox is to try to see if some of those major symptoms, um, such as being tired, overweight, bloated, all that sort of thing, if by doing a, a detox or a reset, if you can actually eliminate some of those symptoms. Um, of course, weight loss is always uh, the superficial one that a lot of people ask me, you know, if I do this detox, am I going to lose weight? And the short answer is yes, you probably will. Um, but there's so many more benefits to detoxing. And some of them, some of these symptoms that might be a, a problem due to toxins in your body, you might not even realize. So um, I think Ash is going to share some of the common symptoms that she finds that people really benefit from by doing a detox. Yeah, I'd like to share a little bit about the benefits of detox because I think you're right. Most people are interested in detoxing for weight loss. And I used to get that question a lot as well when I was coaching. Um, and my answer would always be that weight loss is a happy side effect to getting healthy and cleaning out your body of things that shouldn't be there. Um, so some of the things that can, can result in the benefit of doing these detoxes is obviously weight loss for a lot of us because most of what we're dealing with when we're struggling is inflammation. Um, so cleaning up the diet and getting inflammatory foods out really help to reduce inflammation and result in weight loss for a lot of people. Um, 
It also really will help to improve energy levels. Again, that inflammation tends to lead to fatigue for a lot of folks. It improves immune function because now your body is able to really work at full capacity. It's not struggling to eliminate all of these toxins or figure out what to do with them if it can't flush them out. The detox will also help with mental focus and clarity. So a lot of times people will come in and say like, I'm feeling forgetful or I have something that maybe feels like brain fog. Again, I'm gonna point back to inflammation and most of the time inflammation is a result of our diet and foods that are inflammatory or reactive for us individually. So detox is a nice way to kind of remove those foods, reduce the inflammation, and as a result have more improved um, mental clarity. It will also aid just in the general function of all of our internal organs that are responsible for detoxification, like our kid kidneys and liver, um, when those aren't overburdened with these extra toxic chemicals or food products or inflammatory foods, they're able to do their job a little bit better. Um, obviously, it will help clear up skin. Uh, two of the biggest, I would say, uh, culprits of acne or any type of skin issue like rosacea or hives a lot of times is going to be dairy and gluten. Um, it can also be other food sensitivities, but those seem to be two of the biggest culprits for most people. I actually had a patient just email me today. She just finished the detox and she said the biggest thing for her was so she knows her skin was yeah. a lot better. So and yeah, for a lot of people, for a lot of us women trying to have better skin, we try all these beauty products. But what we don't realize is sometimes just cleaning up our diet can be uh, one of the biggest beauty secrets. Absolutely. And getting all the nutrients that we need really allows our skin to look healthy and glow and all the things that we're trying to achieve with whatever creams and things that we're using topically. Um, well, also, it's probably important for a lot of your patient base, this can help reduce joint pain. So again, we're pointing back to inflammation, but a lot of foods that cause inflammation can result in joint inflammation, which then is painful for a lot of folks. Um, improved sleep, which is a big thing for a lot of us, especially if there are other moms listening, um, sleep is important. It's also very important for your body to work effectively in terms of its own detox capacity to have reduced stress. And by removing the inflammatory foods and getting good sleep, you're eliminating two stressors on the internal systems. Helps reduce cravings. So when we get the sugar and the carbohydrates out of our diet that our body has kind of become dependent on, we see usually about halfway through that the cravings have kind of dissipated and people are not dealing with those issues anymore. Um, also helps with the digestive function. So you'd mentioned before kind of bloating being, being an issue. Um, whether it's constipation, diarrhea, bloating, um, gas, a lot of times we'll find that removing these inflammatory foods and cleaning up the diet will help with both bloating and just digestion overall. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, from personal experience, I've done the detox uh, probably about, I don't know, maybe about 10 times. And I notice each time, you know, obviously there's a, usually a few pounds lost. Not always for me, but uh, for my husband, he always gets, you know, 10 pounds lost pretty yeah, easy, yeah. which is always true. Um, but one of the, I guess it's like slightly embarrassing, but the bad breath thing, like I always feel like my breath is so much fresher <laughs> after doing a 14-day yeah. detox. Obviously, for one, I drink coffee a lot, so don't have coffee breath, but you know, you're just, you're not putting so many acidic things and obviously things that your body just doesn't always know what to do with. And so that really helps me. I always feel uh, my brain is functioning better, less bloated, um, and a lot of more energy. You know, even without coffee, I have so much more energy once I, I get going with my smoothies and eating lots of great fruits and vegetables. So you, you won't miss the caffeine. Um, the sugar, you know, it's an addiction just like anything else. So once you get past it, you know, you'll be feeling so much better. So um, I think, uh, you know, all of you will notice at least one, if not multiple fit symptoms will definitely get better after doing a detox for sure. I would agree. And also just on the coffee piece, if there are other coffee drinkers out there, I am a coffee lover. It's the hardest thing for me to give up, but I've had to do it multiple times that I'm in a coffee break again right now. Um, it's important to wean off of that slowly. Uh, I don't know if you've ever tried to give up coffee before, but it can result in a pretty nasty headache if you're caffeine dependent. 
Um, typically the way that I would coach around that is to have people start the first couple of days, like a week prior to starting the detox to wean off that caffeine. So you're going to titrate down slowly using about three quarters of regular, a quarter decaf for a couple of days, then half and half, then a quarter regular, three quarters decaf, and then a couple of days of just decaf because that will have trace amounts of caffeine. And then you can switch over to some type of herbal tea um, to get you through the detox period. But that's an important thing to kind of catch ahead of time because that can make it pretty miserable if you just kind of go cold turkey. Yes, it can give you some pretty nasty headaches, but if you do it the right way, you know, you'll avoid some of that uh, pain from all those headaches. So that's great. Another thing people ask me is, um, you know, am I going to have to be running to the bathroom all the time? They are worried that how it's going to affect their stomach. And I think with uh, the product line we use, you know, it's not meant to be anything harsh. It's not like you're going to uh, a vitamin shop and just buying some, you know, detox pills to where it's going to flush everything out. That's not what we're trying to do. Um, so, you know, if anything, you might be having to run to the bathroom to, to go number one just because you're going to be drinking so much water and obviously fruits and vegetables, which are going to have a lot of water in there as well. Um, but I really can't say I've had, out of all the customers I've had do a detox, they didn't ever usually report that they had any trouble um, with their stomach being upset or having to go to the bathroom in that sense. So um, from, from almost everyone has not had any symptoms with that. So I think as long as you're kind of following everything, you should be fine as far as that goes. And, you know, most of it's happening. Um, your liver and your kidneys, we're kind of pushing our body into that phase two of uh, detoxification. So it's a, it's a great place to, to have your body back in because a lot of times we're just, our bodies are overwhelmed and they can't keep up. And so a lot of those toxins just get stored in our, in our fat cells. Absolutely. And I would say too, like this is not designed to be like a colon cleanse, which I think a lot of people confuse detox and, and flushing and colon cleanses and things like that. This is like a whole body system detox. So it's really working to, like I said, remove those inflammatory foods and then support the detoxification systems in the body. So they shouldn't find themselves with any real significant GI upset because of this program. Um, I would think that they would be going number one a lot more. One, just because that's how we a lot of times get rid of inflammation. It's water that we're holding, and so that's going to flush out. Um, so that potentially will happen to most people, but otherwise I think GI symptoms, they should be fine and see actually quite an improvement. Yeah. So what do you think, Ashley? Should we dive into a little bit of how the program works and um, what it would look like for a typical day and what you can and can't have? And I'll kind of explain to you guys. So um, when you do this 14-day program, what you do is you actually have two shakes a day, and those shakes are going to include a scoop of protein powder and a scoop of cleanse powder. And you're also going to be taking some detox pills and a digestive enzyme, which will help you to break down what you are getting out of these uh, shakes. And then you're going to have one meal a day as well. So you can mix it and match it however you want. Some people like the breakfast and lunch as their smoothie. Some people do lunch and dinner, breakfast and dinner. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's all based on kind of your preference. And then um, there's also a whole wonderful list that they put together for you that goes over what your optimal food choices are. Um, so when you, if you did get this program, it comes with a booklet and it has kind of everything mapped out for you on this little booklet. And so, for example, you're able to have protein, you can have chicken, fish, um, scallops, turkey, anything that's organic, free range, wild caught, along those lines. Um, there's a bunch of veggie options. Some are better than others to help you kind of get into that detoxification, um, as well as you can have beans, fruits, and of course, uh, everything's going to be kind of gluten-free as far as grains and flour go, and you can have nuts, and of course, spices, and um, coconut oil, all those types of things. So there's a lot of stuff that you can have on the detox, and so that's what we want kind of people to focus on. I think... Uh, when you look through this, you kind of realize how many things are out there that you probably don't even have necessarily around your house that you can take this list and kind of take it to the grocery store and kind of shop off of that list. So that's another really be great benefit to the program is it comes with everything kind of ready to go for you. Absolutely. And I 
think that it's nice because it's flexible enough that you can incorporate it into everyday life. So if you are someone who works and has to go out to lunch with customers or ha have to take people to dinner, um, you can go out and order a filet and some asparagus and still be compliant with this. Um, you are able to eat breakfast if you choose. Bacon and eggs are totally acceptable. So it doesn't, it's not as restrictive as it sounds. And I think that's important for people to know too. There are ways to eat out and enjoy yourself for the two weeks that you're committed to this program and still get good results. And I think me and Ashley both can agree we love Chipotle yeah. as a, a go to because you can get some organic chicken and you can add, you know, salad and you can put, you know, tomatoes and even some guacamole. Just kind of maybe uh, take out a few of those uh, extra goodies like the cheese and sour cream, maybe leave those out. But uh, a lot of other stuff is good to go for Chipotle. So even if you're on the run and you don't have a meal planned, you know, there's still ways around it. And of course, that's uh, something you can always ask us for help if you are someone who is really busy and you might not always have time um, to necessarily make that meal. There's still, you know, don't don't look at that as just, um, I can't do it, there's no way. There's always a way, you just have to kind of uh, figure w your way around it. Absolutely, yeah, there's lots, lots of options when you're eating out. Um, I'd be happy to share some of that with you if you have patients who have questions. Um, I did a lot of that when I was coaching, like we would actually go out to eat and learn how to order off of the menu so that you could modify it to make it fit what you needed to do. Um, so many places now too are so aware of food sensitivities and allergies that if you need gluten-free, dairy-free options, they're very, very accommodating. Even if the menu doesn't come that way, they typically know what items on the menu would be safe for you. Um, so just get, getting in the habit of looking for those things and reading your labels are really, really important because there's sugar hiding literally everywhere. Um, so just kind of practicing being more aware of what you're eating and knowing kind of what to look for and how to ask for what you need, I think is important too. Absolutely. And I think uh, one of my nutrition teachers back in chiropractic school, her motto was always that a label in general is just bad. And if you have to read a whole bunch of stuff, then you probably shouldn't be eating it anyways. And kind of that other rule of thumb, like if your uh, grandmother wouldn't recognize the ingredient, then it's probably not good for you. Because, um, you know, nowadays they'll find any way to disguise you know, like, for example, we all kind of know now that MSG is not great, but they've come up with, like, I don't even know what the number is, like, at least 40 other names for MSG. So you might think, oh, this doesn't have MSG in it, but, you know, it definitely uh, has another derivative of it. It's just disguised um, as another name. So we got to be careful for all those uh, little traps that we can fall into. So speaking of MSG, what actually are the things unfortunately that we have to avoid for those 14 days um you know don't freak out when we tell you this list but it's it's not so bad we promise but let's go over what we can't have for 14 days and hopefully some of those things are something that we might want to eliminate even after the detox is over yes for most people i think this comes as a little bit of a shock because some of these things they're going to think are healthy um, and it's not to say that they're not healthy, but for a lot of people, they can be inflammatory. And the point of this is to try to reduce the stress on the body, reduce inflammation, and get you to a nice balance point um, where we can start really making good progress. So um, things that we ask to eliminate over the 14 days include all grains, which is including your wheat or gluten, oats, corn, rice, quinoa, rye, anything that's a grain, even if it's gluten-free for 14 days, um, needs to be eliminated. All dairy products, um, again, dairy, I firmly believe is inflammatory for most of us. We've just been so accustomed to using it for most of our lives that we don't recognize the impact it has on us when we're using it. Um, I'm a perfect example of that. I didn't know that I had a dairy issue until I was nursing my son, who's now 12. Um, and when I tried to bring dairy back into my life, I realized that's why my entire childhood, I felt like I was carrying a bowling ball around in my belly. Um, I didn't even notice that it, I felt better when I wasn't drinking it. It was when I tried to bring it back in. So that's another thing to look at is when you start to reintroduce these foods, do it slowly one category at a time to see how it's really impacting you. Um, all legumes, so your soy, any beans, lentils, peanuts um, will need to be removed from the diet. Again, inflammatory, and for people who are potentially mold toxic and inflamed from that, 
um, peanuts and soy can really tend to carry mold. Um, all sugars need to be eliminated. So you're going to see your sucrose, high fructose corn syrup. Um, we can use a little bit of natural sweetener alternatives like a stevia or a monk fruit. Um, however, I will make the cautionary statement that a lot of us who are dealing with kind of um, this resistant weight loss also have some insulin sensitivity issues and stevia can really mess with that. So see how you're feeling, but if you're really needing something sweet, a stevia or monk fruit would be a good option. I would encourage you though to look for a pure form of that, something that doesn't have any other sugar alcohols added to it because that can cause GI upset. Um, and then a little bit of honey or maple syrup would be acceptable um, sparingly, but there's not a whole lot of things you should be eating that, that would go on anyhow since grains are gone. Um, but they're there if you absolutely need them. Any artificial sweeteners, however, like a Splenda, Sweet and Low, Equal, um, need to be eliminated. That would even include chewing gums, which a lot of us, I think, overlook when we're doing things like this. Um, all alcohol, which I know is a tough one, especially when we're stressed, but we've got other things that can help kind of reduce that stress level for you. Um, and anything with caffeine, any sodas as well. Um, so for those of you who, like me, really, I used to be a soda junkie. I don't drink sodas anymore, but I have switched over to like a carbonated water, which really helps kind of break up the monotony of just plain water if you're getting bored. Um, so there's lots of options out there for that. Any sweets, desserts, chocolates, candy, things like that, obviously, are going to have sugars and probably dairy and soy, so we need to avoid that. And then anything that's fried. So we want to make sure we're avoiding like the um, vegetable oils like canola and corn and things like that. Awesome. Well, I know that's intimidating at first, but I think you'll see if you commit to the program that it's not as bad as it sounds. And there's even some tips and tricks that you can kind of do if you are in, in a little bit of a rut and you have a really bad craving because that is normal uh, depending on how kind of addicted to maybe sugar, for example, your body is. Um, and there's actually even a little extra help you can get from a couple of different products um, that really help curb some of those cravings. And then there's also, I think, a, a tip that Ashley has um, if you're kind of really hungry or kind of just feeling blah, um, sometimes you can also supplement some things into your water um, or under your tongue. She's going to give us a trick about that. So that way you have some ideas of what you can do if you're kind of in a little bit of a struggle. Um, so yeah, why don't you share a couple of those tips with us? Sure. So in terms of just general tips, things you can do at home without spending any extra money um, using sea salt, but you want a good sea salt, like uh, Redmond's is my favorite, but you want something that's a really good quality sea salt, a pinch of that under your tongue will really help to kind of quell any kind of hunger pains you think you may be having. Um, obviously drinking water first is what we should do before we eat because a lot of times we're, our bodies are confusing dehydration with hunger. So we want to make sure that we're hydrated um, and that if we are really then actually hungry that we're picking some snacks that are going to be in your little guidebook of all of the appropriate things to be snacking on like fruits, veggies, nuts, seeds, things like that. Um, keeping your electrolytes balance is really important as well as because you're probably going to be going to the bathroom flushing a lot of that fluid out. So we want to make sure you stay properly hydrated. Um, Dr. Nadia can share with you some of the products when you're talking with her in the office. We do have an electrolyte. It's a nice little liquid in a bottle, so it's very easy to carry around and splash some into your water, um, but it's going to contain sodium and magnesium, so that will help balance the electrolytes and, and keep you from potentially cramping your teeth anyway. Um, and then we do have a nice product called Craver Rest that really helps if you're someone who things like, oh, I'll never be able to give up sugar and carbs. I'm just, I need them in my life. Um, this product really helps to address those types of carb dependency cravings and sugar cravings at the beginning of this program um, because the first probably seven days are going to be the hardest as your body starts to readjust to not getting what it's used to, to seeing most of the time. Yeah, I think for me when I'm doing a detox, I really rely on like a little handful of nuts or some almond butter. Um, that usually kind of hits the spot. Um, you can also just do like fruits or like a little bit of avocado with a little sea salt on it. Um, usually that kind of fills you up and 
kind of set something off in your brain to where you kind of, you know, fulfill that little bit of hunger that you might be having. Um, and just make sure that if you are going to be out and about that you do pack some sort of snack with you so that you're not caught out somewhere without a snack. But worst case, I'm sure you could run into a convenience store and get some nuts, as long as obviously no peanuts, but some cashews or almonds or something to kind of hold you over. Because in the first couple of days, you sometimes do get a little bit more hungry um, while your body is adjusting to, you know, maybe not always eating full meals, obviously, because you're going to be doing the two smoothies. Um, so there's a little adjustment period for that as well. And then I think another one, a great one too in the morning to kind of wake yourself up is just a hot, you can do a hot cup of water or you could put, if it's cat decaffeinated tea, it could be tea. You can put some fresh lemon in there and even a little pinch of cayenne. Um, and that'll kind of give you a little zing to kind of wake you up in the morning, kind of make you feel a little bit better. Um, so that's another little trick. Um, there's also some other kind of detox tips if you want to kind of really get into it you can even do something called dry brushing which is where um, you kind of do this before you get into the shower and you do like kind of circular type motions um, some people actually have I think like an actual dry brush um, and you can do that and kind of facilitate it towards your heart and that will kind of get your lymphatic system going and kind of drain some things that might be kind of stored in your lymph system as well. And then another one I've told people about before, and sometimes people think I'm crazy, but you really do feel good afterwards, is like your own at-home hydrotherapy where you kind of do hot cold. So you have a nice hot shower on you, and then you switch it to the cold, give yourself a little blast, and that'll stimulate your blood vessels to kind of contract, and um, it'll create like a really nice feeling afterwards, kind of like a really refreshing type feeling, almost like you would feel after doing a, like a hot yoga class or going to the sauna or a spa day or something. Yeah, and that also benefits your immune system and aids in weight loss. So there's a lot of benefits to doing that hot cold back and forth in the shower a couple of times as uncomfortable as the cold can be for some of us. Um, and then for myself personally, when I've had to go on these elimination diets and felt very sugar craving, um, having a hard time getting off of the sugars, I just tend to eat a lot of fruit. So my favorites would be like apples and pineapple because those seem to be kind of on the sweeter side. And that would really help kind of kill my sweet tooth and get me through the first couple of days. And then I would notice it taper back off a little bit where I wouldn't feel that I needed it so much. Um, but don't forget you can eat the fruit. So <laughs> yes, you, fruit is not off limits. It's just a matter of if you are trying to do it more so to balance your blood sugar, then you just want to watch out for which fruits are highest um, as far as glycemic index, which is why I think in this uh, program, like if you uh, look at the page with the fruits, you might not see like bananas on there um, just because those are higher in sugar. But I'm not sure how your feelings are, but I tell people sometimes like if you're not necessarily doing it to, to balance um, blood sugar, you know, don't feel like you would be uh, cheating too bad by having like a little bit of banana mixed in with your smoothie. Yeah, um, I don't know. So for two, <laughs> so we don't have to get too crazy with it. Yeah, there's lots of, and you know, everyone's a little bit different. So some people might really need that extra carbohydrate to, to feel like they're satiated through the day. And so don't forget, so you can throw some, some fruits or veggies into your smoothie as well. You don't have to just drink it with water. Mm -hmm. um, I find mine much more filling and satisfying if I do throw in like some frozen strawberries and blueberries. It makes it a little bit thicker and it feels like I'm drinking a milkshake and I've learned to trick myself into really enjoying them actually. Um, so there's ways to kind of play around with this to make it work for you so that you don't feel like you're depriving yourself, which is the most important thing for staying compliant, I think. Yes, I do the same thing with some, I buy, you know, a bunch of fresh fruit and some of it I might throw in the freezer and then throw it in the smoothie and it really does help, especially for those of you who might not be used to making smoothies and might not um, be as open to the different tastes uh, that the powders have. So that really is helpful for people. Um, so don't feel like if you make your smoothie the first day and you hate it, don't, you know, don't give up. You just have to play around with it and eventually you'll find kind of that perfect smoothie for you. And it even gives some like really great uh, smoothie recipes in the back as well. Um, there's also some great recipes in the back of this little booklet. Um, one of them that's really tasty is the one that's with some shrimp. 
and there's also a chicken with garlic pesto. Um, so you can get really fancy if you want, and you can use all the spices and garlic, and you can saute things, and you can drizzle sesame oil. So there's a lot of fun things you can do. I think uh, I even was more uh, kind of inspired to cook because you know there's so many things you can have that you just have, you know, not really been using maybe on an everyday basis. But now more than ever, you kind of want to try those. Um, and then is there any anyone who shouldn't do the detox? Um, you know, we have probably a lot of different people who might be interested, but they want to make sure that it's something that's okay with them. Um, they might be taking medications or whatnot. Um, a big one's probably uh, pregnant and nursing women. We know um, that's not, hasn't really been tested, I'm, I'm guessing. And so that's kind of why we want to steer clear of that. But of course, once you're done nursing and if you are trying to get back on track after you're done with that, you can certainly uh, do a detox afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. I think for most patient populations, it's safe. Um, it's not a harsh detox. We're not starving people. Um, so I think it really is just probably nursing and pregnant women who need to be careful. Yes. And of course, if you have any concerns of medications, you can always check with your doctor. We can can always give you a list of the ingredients if you need to check with your doctor and, and see if there's any contraindications or whatnot. Um, let's see, we got a few people watching. I just want to make sure that no one has any questions um, because I would love to hear from you guys. If you have any specific questions, you can comment on this live Facebook feed. And of course, after we're done with this, you can feel free to rewatch it or share with a friend. And we recorded it as well, so we'll be able to um, send that out as well. Um, I know uh, one thing that my husband always laughs about, um, and so do a lot of other people, is they might make fun of, you know, gluten-free. What's the deal with gluten-free? Why, why is gluten so bad? That's that's one thing that you know is we're going to be eliminating um, in this 14-day detox. And I know Ashley wants to share a little bit about. You know, what's so evil about um, gluten and what is it causing in America for all of us um, people who eat gluten all day, every day? So I have listened to, and if you are all interested in learning more about it yourselves, I would encourage you to look up Dr. Tom O'Brien. Um, he is a very well-known chiropractor in the functional medicine space. Um, and I've heard him lecture a number of times on gluten and kind of the damage that it does. So for... A lot of people, I know that it still seems like it may be a trendy thing, like low fat was. Um, however, what we're finding is that it's not just celiac patients who need to avoid gluten, but the protein in gluten, where actually no one is able to digest it properly. And so what happens is these little proteins get into the gut lining and actually start to make micro tears. Now our gut lining is only one epithelial cell thick, so it's a very fragile tissue. It's just one layer of skin, basically. And so when it gets those scratch marks and it, it kind of turns it into like a cheesecloth with a tear. Um, and so what then happens is all of the foods that we're eating that potentially could be inflammatory for us are now able to leak into the bloodstream and they don't belong there. So what happens is the immune system then identifies these, what they see as invaders in the bloodstream, like the same thing they would do when they see a virus pathogen, and they start to um, build antibodies against that food protein structure. So this is how we start to see people developing food sensitivities for all types of foods. Um, and it's because we have that consistent exposure to gluten. Um, some people are more susceptible to this and not able to heal as quickly, but if you the analogy I like is if you if you would get a scratch on your hand, if you leave it alone for a couple of days, it'll probably heal up okay. But if you continue to pick at it, you're going to have a sore there for quite a while. And so we get this issue that we have with the gluten making micro tears in the intestinal wall at breakfast because we had toast. And then we have maybe lunch with a sandwich and now we're having more tears so there's no time to heal. And so we tend to see it compounding over years, which is why it tends to show up as an issue for a lot of people like in our mid thirties, for example, you don't see tons of kids having this, some, but not as bad. Or we'll say, how come I can't eat like I used to when I was a kid? And it's because the years and years and years and years of this micro tearing in the intestine has now compounded and we aren't able to heal because we never give it a break. Um, so I'm not saying, you know, gluten is the devil by any means, but I do think that there is a good argument for 
everybody to eliminate it from their diet at least a majority of the time. Um, and you can always eliminate it for this period and then and then retest by um, the, the standard that the Institute of Functional Medicine suggests is once the food has been out of your diet, ideally for a period of 21 days, you can start to reintroduce and see if it's causing inflammation for you. And you do that by then eating that particular food. So if you wanted to challenge gluten, for example, you would eat a whole wheat bread three times a day for two days in a row and then wait the third and fourth day because food sensitivities can be very tricky and sometimes it takes up to 72 hours for us to start to experience inflammation. So for me, it could be I get bloated immediately um, because that's my weak point. But for maybe Dr. Nadia, she experiences joint pain on day four. Um, and it's really hard to pinpoint which foods are doing that to you if you're kind of bringing them all back at once. But gluten is a major, major culprit. My personal experience with it is if I accidentally eat gluten, which I have I've been gluten-free for almost 10 years now, um, I will break out and cystic the acne on my chin about three days after I've been exposed to it. Um, so that is where it shows up on me. But it, there's a host of different ways that it can present itself as an inflammatory food for you. So I encourage all of you at least to give it a shot and remove it and see how much better you might feel if you're not exposed to it on a regular basis. Awesome. I really like that description. You know, I think a lot of people probably know that deep down, but it's hard, you know, to avoid it. But at least if we can limit exposure and then, of course, doing a detox like this, I think uh, for some of us who easily get off track, you know, a detox might be good for us to do maybe even seasonally kind of as a good reminder um, just as a reset, you know, that way you get re-motivated, you feel cleansed, you feel like, okay, I can do this going forward. Um, so that's why I just really, really believe in this uh, a detox program. And someone did have a question uh, if it was vegan. So um, the there's two different types of the programs you can get. So one of them is like a pure pea protein. And so that one would be a, considered, you know, vegetarian, vegan. Um, so that one, it comes in original, which is kind of flavorless, or there's a vanilla. And then there's also uh, a paleo type protein that one uh actually what what is the ingredients in that one that is a uh, hydrolyzed beef protein so okay. it would not be ideal for a vegan or vegetarian but if someone was dealing with an autoimmune condition like a Hashimoto's or an RA patient something like that um that would be probably a better choice for them and that one comes I believe in a mixed berry flavor um in the in the box and that one's a little more creamy, I think, right? When you mix that one, a little thicker. Yeah. So there's two different kinds, of course. You know, after this is over, you can feel free to ask me any questions. It also comes as a 14-day detox or a 21-day. Um, so depending on, you know, what you feel you can start with or, you know, aspire to doing the 21 days. Um, I also, if you're joining me, that if you're not local, um, I also have an eHealth store with Designs for Health, so I believe my eHealth is drnadia.ehealthpro, so I'll put that in the comments too, um, so you can get the detox and even have it shipped to your home without having to come into the office, or of course you could come into the office and we can sit down and talk more. Um, there's also a detox questionnaire, so for anyone who's really excited about this, you can even fill out a questionnaire and see if you know, detoxing might be good for you. Um, I think something that comes up on the questionnaire is um, like exposure to different toxins, which we didn't even talk about today because we just didn't have time. But just in our environments, there's actually, you know, believe it or not, your, your indoor environment is actually two times more polluted than it is outside. So um, a lot of us have been at home a lot lately. So, um, you know, that's something to think about. Um, there's also just so many synthetic chemicals in our water. Um, there's just chemicals all around us. Each year they add about 2,000 more chemicals, so we, we kind of can't avoid that. Um, and even babies are born with chemicals in their system, so that's why it's so important to kind of, if you can challenge yourself to do a detox, it's, it's just going to benefit you in so many ways. So um, I'm hoping that we were able to kind of do a good job explaining, you know, what what it is that a detox is and how it works and how the program works. And if you guys have any other questions, you know, uh, we'll be able to answer those for you. So just feel free to reach out to us even after this is over. Um, let's see, I think we got 
uh, that question answered. I don't see any other ones right now. Uh, Ashley, do you have any last parting words that you want to uh, share with us? Just that if you're on the fence, I would really encourage you to give it a shot because I can't tell you how many times I had clients tell me I didn't know, I didn't feel good, or I can't remember the last time I felt this good after they'd gone through a period of time where they were eliminating these inflammatory foods. So it's a, it's a small minor investment of your time and money into what could be a really, really big payoff for you health wise. Awesome. We appreciate it. We have one more question that came in. How often can you do the detox? Um, I had just mentioned, you know, that you could do it seasonally, but do you have, is there any limitation to how often you can do it or is there another, program that Designs for Health has that you could do after the detox? Uh, I don't think there's a limit to how long you could do it or how often because you really are supplementing with good nutritious products and you're eating healthy meals. Um, so it, for a lot of people that I know, like coming from the CrossFit industry, they ate this way most of the time. Um, they might use shakes for their lunch because it was easy to keep something clean at work that way um, and then just eat one meal a day. But um, in terms of follow-ups, we have the, the tubs of powder that I think are a good kind of adjunct to a healthy diet. So you could then just transition into using a paleo protein or a whole body collagen, which is a really nice product in general. Um, our pea proteins, again, come individually. So there's a lot of nice ways to kind of support this lifestyle moving forward where you don't have to commit to this 14 day kit all the time. Um, we also carry a really nice keto line. So if you're using this to kind of jumpstart or kickstart into a keto program, um, that might be something worth taking a look at down the road. But yeah, I don't, I don't see any health implications to using something like this long term. But um, like I said, you don't need to commit to the 14 day kits necessarily because there is the, the option of purchasing the items individually and then using them as you see fit. Maybe it works better for you as like a maintenance to use one shake a day and two healthy meals. Um, so there's lots of different ways to play around with it. Yeah, and Designs for Health has so many products um, on their website so that you can definitely check out. They have everything from vitamin C, vitamin D, it comes in all different forms. They have powder form if you don't like swallowing pills. They have um, liquid form. So they have an endless amount of supplements and especially right now it's important to support your immune system with everything that's going on. So if you have any questions about immune support, um, joint health, digestion, they have something for you know every body system and their products you know really do stand out and, um, and that's why Ashley is, is working and representing this company is because she also believes in the quality of the supplements you know we can all go to Costco or Walgreens, but we don't, you know, know what we're getting there. So it's great um, that we have such a, a great research and development team working for us with Designs for Health. So I'm really happy with their products. It's actually something important to mention because I think when people start to dabble into supplements, they don't understand that they're not all created equally. Um, I believe the last time I checked, it cost under $500 to start a supplement company. So pretty much anybody who wants to can do that. Um, what I would suggest is if you are shopping around for supplements, every bottle should have a 1-800 number on it to their customer care team. And what you want to do, if, it, if you're not using our products, which I would encourage you to because they are very high quality, we're a science first um, committed company. So everything we do is based in science and research. Um, however, other products out there will have their customer service number on and you need to call that number and ask them if they've been third party verified. If they are not a third party verified company, that means that they are not sending their product to an independent lab to have it evaluated. On all of our products, you can actually see the batch codes and call or find out what is in each of those products. And we stand by every single report. Um, so the certificate of analysis is important, especially when we're talking about detoxing because you can get into some products that are going to potentially be contaminated with mold or heavy metals, depending on how they're um, grown or harvested or um, manufactured. So just being very aware again of the labels and being able to know that you're getting a good quality product is important. Um, making sure that your fish oil is actually what it says it is, that you are getting the therapeutic doses of EPA, DHA, and not just some filler oils. Um, things like that are really important because it will impact your outcome. 
And so while you may think I can save maybe $10 here, you're not really going to get the benefit of the protocol if you're not using high quality product. So true. Well, this has been great. Um, thank you everyone who joined and thank you everyone who's going to watch this later. Um, keep sending your questions and then, you know, maybe if we can hear from you guys too, if there's any other specific topics you guys want to hear about, um, nutritional speaking, we can maybe set up another time to talk with you guys and learn more from Ashley. So I think we had a great time today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we really appreciate it. And if you have anything else to say, and uh, you can do that now. I just thank you so much for including me in your um, detox kickoff. I'm excited for you and for all of your patients. If you have any questions or need anything or, or they reach out to you and, and you need some support, feel free to reach out. But I, I appreciate you all sitting with us and listening today and hopefully it was informative and you learned something and were motivated to give this a shot. Awesome. Thanks again, everyone. Hope you guys have a great week and thanks so much for joining. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.